This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Pictures about that. Okay, we're back. We're live. We're here in Honolulu. Um, this is, uh, gee, I guess this is uh, research in Manoa. And we're talking to Andrea Gabrielli, researcher at HIGP in SOWEST. That's the Hawaii Institute of Geophysics and Planetology in SOWEST, the School of Ocean, Earth Science, and Technology at UH Manoa. And he is not here. He is joining us by Skype uh, from New Orleans. In fact, he is covering the meeting of the American Geophysical Union, which is taking place in New Orleans right now. And we have uh, the, um, the, the good fortune to connect up with him by Skype. So welcome to the show, Andrea. Looking great. Good morning, Jay. Hello, everyone. Greetings from New Orleans in Louisiana, the hub of this year's American Geophysical Union meeting. <laughs> so why did you go? So um, here um, I am. I, I have my poster behind, and I'm here at the convention center to. Um, report to what is happening, what, what are the exciting discoveries of, of science that are being discussed here at the meeting. AGU is the largest, um, basically, the largest um, uh, meeting in the air, Earth and Space Sciences. Ah. Um, the American Geophysical Union was founded in 1919. And it counts about 62,000 members worldwide. So it's an international association. Um, but um, this year we have about, uh, I was talking to some people here, the, the organizers of the meeting. We have about 24,000 attendees from a variety of countries. So this is, a, uh, and, 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 and there is an um, interesting story because this is the first time in a while that the meeting is actually moved from San Francisco. Because usually this meeting is held in San Francisco, California. Uh, but this year we're here in Louisiana. So um, some of the organizers of the meetings were mentioning that this is a wonderful opportunity to innovate the meeting and also to um, talk um, a little bit about science and in other areas of the United States to engage the vibrant community that we have here in New Orleans and also talk a little bit about science on the Mississippi River. So talking about, um, you know, various things that are happening here. So these are the, the, the news of the, the, the you know the, the news of to the, of this year uh, meeting here on the banks of the Mississippi River. Yeah. So what do you got behind you there, Andrea? What is that? Well, this is the po this is just a, um, the poster that um, I presented yesterday. So this is some of the research that uh, Robert Wright and Paul Lucy, John Porter, and many other people at HIGP uh, are, are dealing with. So. Uh, volcanic gases uh, and and and, and developing new spectrometers to measure vog in Hawaii and also forecasting volcanic eruptions uh, all around the Earth. Um, however, um, the meeting is not uh, uh, just about volcanoes, but we have planetary science, we have meteorology, atmospheric sciences, and particularly th this year. I was particularly uh, struck by the fact that uh, education and um, policy, policy makers and policy making were also present. So that was kind of um, interesting. And particularly, there are many undergraduate students who joined this year meeting. And I talked to uh, some people from the University of Texas. They have undergraduate projects. Uh, uh, sponsored by NASA and other federal agencies uh, to actually investigate uh, the northern lights, uh, the aurora, to try and get spectra from the auroras uh, and so uh, try and understand the composition, the particles that are that create aurora. So that, that was particularly exciting as we also have undergraduates this year. So that was uh, that was that was something. And also um the innovation this year is taking place by having uh, um, a, a experiments um, because um, walking. I, I believe we have some 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 pictures as well. 
Um, there is a picture. I, I think it's the second that I sent you earlier. Uh, let's, take a look, let's take a it's, look at uh, your pictures, okay? Yeah, let's, let's take we're a gonna, look. We're going to uh, take them and I'll describe them you, to you. I want to show you how large this convention center is. Okay, let's take the pictures and I'll describe them to you and then you can tell me what that picture is about, okay? Let's look at the first Excellent. one. Excellent. Yeah. One, so, one second, Andrea. Uh, We're just getting the pictures up. <clears throat> the first one, the first one should be um, basically just the, the the center of the convention center where there is the big um, AGU logo, and that's the place where basically we we can see um, people can go and talk. But um, I also want to draw you, your attention and the attention of our our viewers to the the massive convention center because uh, this one here in new orleans uh, is actually bigger than the the, the convention center in, in san francisco and this one is about 1.1 million square feet okay we see a so picture it, of the convention really center massive. now Andrea. it is absolutely massive we see a, a picture of the convention center now it's got the agu logo on it and there are yeah, people yeah. all around so what what is what is that uh, to demonstrate for us this one is, is the is, 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 um, um, just to show you the, the the American Geophysical Union logo and the actually the center of the meeting. But let's let's move on to the next picture okay. because that's where we can see the convention center and how really massive it is. Because so we can have so we, we really re, we really can have a glimpse of how large the, the, this meeting is. Yes. Oh, yes. It looks very big. Uh, the yeah, ceiling is not as high as the ceiling it's 1. here. It's 1.1 million square feet, uh -huh. and we have almost um, um, 24,000 attendees this year. Uh -huh. So, so now we uh, see some. You can see, we see you the can attendees. See that's, that's basically uh, the poster um, poster hall section. So you can see there are many posters, hang such as the one behind me. Uh, so we, we can see many posters hanged, uh, people sharing their research. And this is a wonderful occasion to basically learn more about, uh, um, you know, a um, specific field, learn new things, but also network, because that's the place where new collaborations uh, uh, begin you know they, they are um, they give birth to new collaborations between institutes universities and also federal agencies mm. so have you have you met anybody new absolutely so there were some people from uh, um, the um, um, ingv the italian national institute of volcanology ingv and, and, and people were there, they were particularly interested of our research that we're doing in Hawaii, because they also have some sensors on Stromboli volcano, on Etna volcano in Italy, and also in Mexico. So they would like to compare results obtained from their instruments, which are mostly in the ultraviolet parts of the spectrum. So they work with UV lights, and, with respect to our sensors, which are in the thermal infrared between 8 and 14 microns. Mm -hmm. Also, um, some um, NASA scientists were interested uh, in comparing uh, um, our instruments to satellites and um, observations. Um, um, so, uh, mostly the Goddard, uh, Goddard Space Center. And so um, that's just for me. But I imagine, you know, uh, I was talking to some friends of mine. We had um, we had a soest uh, reception um, dinner. So all the, the our uh, you know friends and colleagues from Hawaii, both current uh, and former, were able to meet in one specific venue. And I was talking to some of them. Really, there is uh, lots of things going on between universities and really new collaborations starting. It it, it, it it's just a, a wonderful experience. Um, have you have you made any new uh, collaborations, yeah. Andrea? Have you? Established, you know, you guys uh, sit at those tables we saw. You talk to each other about your projects. You share your latest discoveries. And presto, um, you can have an agreement to make a collaboration. Are you seeking that? Have you found that? Have you established new collaborations with the Italians or otherwise? Yeah, 
we basically uh, we discussed about writing new proposals for um, asking for more funds to really carry out uh, carry on and, and 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 continue doing these research as really um uh, you know, trying and better forecast volcanic eruptions using sensors and instruments developing and uh, furthering our advances in in, um, in technology and really um, trying and develop new sensors. Yeah, you know, now, um, Andrea, you know, one of the big topics of discussion, I'm sure, at the AGU, and you, uh, you referred to it a minute ago, is making application for grants. Uh, and Absolutely. trying to trying to get research money, and I know there must be discussion here in New Orleans at the AGU right now today about federal funding um, because this administration has been has been um, less than generous in federal funding and may, maybe has cut some of the federal funding. So, what is the discussion on the floor about uh, federal funding from this administration right now? Well, most of the um... Every administration of basic as basically different areas of, uh, you know, uh, they, they 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 tend to uh, send more money towards one particular topic or another. This one is particularly um, trying to develop military military applications. So I was talking to various people and. Uh, uh, for example, our uh, research in HIGP is also involved um, in um, developing sensors for, uh, you know, various applications. And one of them is actually uh, the military, because mm -hmm. the sensors which we are developing are uh, imaging spectrometers. So they can be used to also to, well, we use them to identify gases. But they can also be used to identify materials, uh, camouflage targets. Uh, so um, Paul Lucy actually at our institute is doing some of this, uh, exactly some of these research for uh, mili specifically for military applications. So really there is a shift in what is important and what is, you know, trying to uh, keep up with, with, with the, the federal fundings and everything. Um, are there, are there and, federal and, agencies there with you? Are you talking to representatives of the government? Um, can you engage with them on the possibility of grants uh, and research money for these projects? Well, I talked to some people from the, um, um, again, NASA uh, and also the National Science Foundations uh, um, about these things, but also uh, there are specific uh, uh, sessions here at AGU where people can basically are uh, trained on how to write proposals. So really, these are very useful, especially for the younger scientists where really can learn uh, the niches, you know, and where really you can apply for having grants money and how to actually receive this money to carry on this research, which is very useful. Yeah, this is very important. Um, so you may come home with some money, am I right? Ah, uh, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how these uh, collaborations that I mentioned earlier um, will evolve. Uh, will evolve in the future, but uh, for now, it seems uh, um, most uh, again in HIGP are well represented here. We have many people presenting research, show new results. Uh, so new, uh, showing new science being created, and so really, it's uh, it's um, uh, um, Hawaii is, is 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 seems to be doing pretty good in this in this um, in, in this um, you know at these meetings. Um, yeah. How many people are there from uh, SOWEST and HIGP? I mean, what sort of contingent do you have around you? We have about a hundred um, present, a hundred different presentations. So it, it's a pretty big number. Uh, you know, um, and uh, a variety of people here um, are, are here talking about um, volcanoes, so talking about lava flows, talking about planetary science, uh, talking about meteorites uh, and, and um, lunar um, geology and planetary geology and geosciences. So um, it's really a, it's really a very nice hub to really discuss. Uh, the science. Well, I know I that at these programs yeah. you have at these programs you have presentations also. 
you have, of course, the posters, but is anybody from Hawaii presenting? Absolutely, yeah. Um, there are various presentations that people can attend, uh, and, uh, and um, some people present, uh, prefer posters as it really, you can stand uh, next to a poster and really talk to all the people uh, passing by because it's really well organized. There is an app, it's an AGU app on your phone ah. where basically you can check uh, presenters and topics and it's really organized there is a number behind every poster so you can really walk to, towards the posters that are interested um, the, the, that you are interested in and really you can talk to the right people at the right time um, um, so posters are a really good occasion for networking because uh -huh, you yeah. can really stand next to your poster and talk for hours to various people talks um, are very good for uh, conveying information and showing images. Uh, there is not a lot of time usually to answer um, for, um, questions and um, answering questions. So usually at talks you, you have to catch up with the presenters afterwards and, and there are um, various um, areas that are specifically arranged in the convention center where you can have such meetings. Uh, so it's really well organized that and New Orleans, uh, New Orleans is, is doing a wonderful job in in uh, in, in um, org and AGU as well in organizing this meeting. Well, um, uh, Andrea, we're going to is... take a short break now. We come back. I want to talk more about New Orleans. I want to talk Absolutely. more about how it is today, how it is for you, what kind of experience it is these days. Because obviously, uh, since the hurricane, it's uh, it's changed. We'll take a, a minute break. We'll be right back with Andrea Gabrielli of HIGP. Good afternoon. My name is Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green, a program on Think Tech Hawaii. We show at three o'clock in the afternoon every other Monday. My guests are specialists, both from here and the mainland, on energy efficiency, which means you do more for less electricity and you're generally safer and more comfortable while you're keeping dollars in your pocket. You can be the greatest, you can be the best, you can be the king, come banging on your chest. You can beat the world, you can beat the war, you can talk to God, go banging on his door. You can throw your hands up, you can beat the clock, you can move a mountain, you can break rocks, you can be a master, don't wait for luck, dedicate yourself and you can find yourself. Yeah. And I believe it. Um, Andrea, we're picture. back. We're live with Andrea Gabrielli. He's from HIGP. He's a researcher, and he joins us by Skype from New Orleans at the meeting, this fabulous meeting of the American Geophysical Union, which is taking place in New Orleans right now. So, uh, Andrea, you know, uh, we're going we're gonna to take a look at more of your pictures. But first, I wanted to talk to you about the exhibits. Uh, what, what, are, what do you see on the exhibits here at the AGU meeting? Uh, yeah, so um, we talked a little bit about science, a little bit the science that is being presented. Um, we talked about federal funding, but also um, one area, one big area of the convention center is actually um, used by exhibitors to present new products. So basically there are a variety of industries and also federal agencies and also journals uh, which scientists might be might use to publish their research in, which basically are there to talk about innovations and new products. So just, um, I believe we have some pictures as well of these exhibits. We're looking, we're um, looking at one picture, and, Andrea. We're looking but, at one picture right, right now. It's a picture of a, a number of exhibits on the floor. Yeah. It's, a, it's up from a mezzanine looking down on the on these various exhibits so i guess that's exactly the picture you're so you, you, about. you can this is, these are some aerial pictures that i took and you can really see uh the, the extent of these uh, these exhibitor um units and so basically uh, drones uh, is uh, um, a pretty interesting topic that is uh, really hot right now here at AGU. I could, uh, I went and talked to some companies and organizations about uh, their drones, and these are and these are really, really expensive, uh, thousands of dollars drones. They can fly 
uh, cameras to take pictures. There are uh, um, there are radars to actually map sea floors. There are environmental sensors. Um, really cutting cutting edge technologies that are being presented and that are based on the research that is carried out by the scientists. Yeah. So uh, we, we really can see a variety of sensors, environmental sensors to measure uh, temperature, humidity, track on uh, uh, climate change, and we can also, um, and, and drones too. And one of the applications that is really being discussed here at AGU is to use um, um, hyperspectral imaging, uh, yes. uh, which is one of my areas of research, for example, and agriculture because uh, basically these drones can be used to fly over uh, uh, crop fields to m monitor the emission and absorption feature in the infrared to actually determine whether plants are stressed or not in terms of water needs. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is something um, really uh, interesting and so this is so also, um, um, there are some uh, major discussions also on food security and exactly on how to use new sensors and new technology to, uh, in terms of food production. So, so that was something interesting that I learned at the meeting as yeah, well. Yeah, you know, when you talk about drones, Andrea, and you talk about drones, uh, uh, sensors from drones uh, that are at some distance from what you want to test, um, that would yeah. be kind of a long distance sensor. That would be a sensor that could see or somehow sense things at hundreds of feet or maybe more. Um, but then you have also sensors that have to be right up close, right? I mean, am I right to assume there's a kind of uh, distinction there? A sensor Absolutely. that can look for hundreds of feet or miles and a sensor that, that needs to be right up on top of whatever it's sensing. Absolutely. And there are, I talked to some people because the goal here, when uh, safety allows, you know, you can you can basically bring the sensor close to the uh, things that you want to monitor. Now, in case of gases, uh, uh, it's dangerous, and we prefer remote uh, uh, measurements. But on other occasions, it's really needed to go close uh, and to measure. And in here, what what, what scientists are interested in is um, uh, that these sensors need to be compact needs to be small, needs to be field portable. And also, this, uh, this is another tendency. Here, uh, I talk to many people in, in this exhibit hall uh, about the importance of having compact sensors. So this is another. There are now microcomputers. Uh, Arduino, is, uh, uh, which is um, um, an Italian invention, that's really making a way, uh, really a small computer, Raspberry Pi. People are talking about these uh, new computers, new technologies to really make these sensors small and compact. You know, um, Andrea, you know when you go to a meeting like AGU, you not only uh, get the network, and you get to collaborate and you get to find out what the other guys are doing. But you also get to confirm that your work is where it should be, that your work is up at the frontier, that you are pushing the frontier. So do you, are you able to confirm that here at the AGU meeting here in 2017? Can you say that you have had confirmation that your work is right up at the frontier of science? Uh, not only my work, but the work of uh, thousands of other people, absolutely. Uh, because um, I, you know, th this is really, this is really an occasion where you can learn uh, about different fields. Because sometimes, you know, being in a university, in a university, you are focused on one particular research. But in this meeting, this is uh, again the largest meeting of all the earth and space sciences. So basically, uh, you really can learn new things uh, and, and um, new things even on different fields. And so th this is where you really realize how important this science, this science that is being discussed here, how important it is, how important this science yeah. being discussed. So uh, Andrea, here, you, really you've is. met a lot of people. You've seen the commercial exhibits. You've, you've heard the presentations. I'm sure you've seen a lot of posters. <clears throat> Do you have a little list, a little list that you will do, little things that you will do when you come back home? And, and what's on the list? When you get back to Honolulu, <clears throat> what would you be doing based on what you learned at this, at this convention? 
Well, probably um, I'm gonna. Uh, I have a small list. Mostly, again, a list of connections that I made. Mm -hmm. So, uh, follow up on emails, you know, uh, um, discuss more about what's for the future, what's really, uh, again, we mentioned this proposal, this uh, uh, grants applications and everything, and really, uh, to really continue uh, carrying out this science. Um, uh, Hawaii um, was well represented, there was a soest stand right there and also the convention center and i was um, i was happy to see that i was happy that hawaii was um, you know not only represented by the scientists uh, that were, that are here uh, but also represented by these stands uh, to really um, you know make make some advertisement of our to um, outreach uh, about our possibilities and our convention center i attended the, uh, a geological society of america in honolulu and were very well organized and I talked to some people there. So um, I was happy to see that SOAS was also present there. <laughs> in, well, in, you know, it, it strikes me that SOAS is really at the front end and you probably have had confirmation. I would yeah, imagine absolutely, people, people absolutely. at the age of that's, that's also the confirmation. But not only so is that uh, we mentioned uh, um, people presenting research, uh, we mentioned the exhibits. Now, uh, also another area of the meeting is used by universities and university departments to actually um, present the research that is being carried out there. I saw University of Alaska Fairbanks, University of Texas, uh, University the, the um, uh, Arizona State University, they had a big Big stand right there. So really, uh, and even international, there is a, the, Roy, the the British Royal Society was there. Uh, so really, really a variety of variety, lots of variety. Yeah. How about the schools in uh, in Louisiana? How about the schools in New Orleans? Are they represented? Anybody from Absolutely. Tulane? And absolutely, absolutely. And and and, and again, this is a. Um, it's really. Um, I mentioned before the fact that the meeting was moved from San Francisco to New Orleans, and uh, um, this is really a fantastic occasion also to uh, engage uh, the local universities here to talk about, for example, the science on the Mississippi River, uh, the, 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 um, uh, for example, the environmental uh, areas here in the delta of the Mississippi, the unique uh, wildlife that is present here, the swamps, the, the Louisiana swamps, and, and uh, you know, and um, and and the, 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 really the, the okay. unique creatures that live here. So not, not only not only technology, as you can see. <laughs> well, you know, uh, Andrea, this has been a great discussion. Really appreciate you phoning in with Skype. Um, it's it's lovely to be able to connect with you while you're while you're uh, far away at at a, at a conference like the AGU conference. I hope that when you get back, we can talk further. In the meantime, I hope you enjoy not only the conference but the joys of Louisiana and especially New Orleans. It's a great city uh, even now. Thank you so much, Thanks, Andrea Gabrelli, HIGP researcher. Thank you very much, Jay. Merry Christmas and see you soon. Thank uh, you. <laughs> Aloha, Andrea. <laughs>